Good day, grade 12s. My name is Kaden Mazokere. I would like to welcome you to lesson number 14 from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student. Um, uh, I've written economics grade 10, 11, and 12, and uh, published business studies grade 11 and 12. All right, so uh, in this lesson, we're going to do what we always do. We start by revising the homework, and then we get down to the lesson of the day, uh, which we will see shortly what it's about. All right, so I gave you simple homework, which was just to determine the kinds of business cycles. All right, so the first part was uh, if it takes 25 months for uh, an economy to go through an upswing and 29 months to go through a downswing. So combine the two, you have a complete cycle because the upswing will have two phases, the downswing will have its two phases. So all in all, we have our four phases, that is a recession, a depression, a recovery, and a prosperity. So that will be between, that will be four years, six months. So that will be a kitchen. And the next one, that will be Kuznets, because that is 18 years. The next one is still Kuznets, and the next one is a juggler, and the last one is a kitchen. All right, so it was a simple activity like that. All right, so we're moving on now to unit three. The, the previous unit was causes of business cycles. So in this unit now, we're moving on to, uh, since we have these um, ups and downs, since our economy does not just grow smoothly, since we have these ups and downs, how then do we make it a smooth? How do we deal with these uh and how do we deal with this so that we can have sort of a smooth uh, uh, economic growth? Of course, we know it's not going to happen like that. This is exactly what will be happening. But how does how do policymakers try to uh, smooth business cycles? All right. Uh, so that is what we're going to answer in this particular lesson. So let's have a look. All right. So it's lesson number 14, as I say, smoothing business cycles. Let's get down to business. So government's prime objective, of course, what is it that government, uh, you know, wants to achieve? Okay, we know that there are um, five main objectives. Um, and we have this word here. You are going to see it again in uh, public sector. All right, uh, it's IFEP for South Africa. So government's prime objective is economic growth its full employment, its exchange rate stability, its price stability, and its uh, economic equity. So there has to be growth in the economy. Everyone has to be employed. Of course, this one is very difficult. I think achieving economic grow growth is easier than achieving full employment. That is everyone willing and able to work must be able to get a job. That's difficult. The next one that is exchange rate stability for our currency to be stable. Uh, in comparison with other currencies. The next one will be price stability and the last one will be uh, economic equity. Price stability, that is uh, inflation. So uh, price is stable in our country. So we have this target 3 to 6%, so it's about that. And then equality, that means uh, bridging the gap between the rich and the poor. So yes, we know we use the Gini coefficient to see um, the gap between the haves and the have-nots. So government's prime, of course, we have these objectives, but their prime objective uh, with business cycles is to achieve the best possible growth rate. Uh, so that is an increase in gross domestic product. All right, government tries to achieve this by implementing two policies. First is the monetary policy and secondly is the fiscal policy. So this one is the responsibility of the South African Reserve Bank and this one is the responsibility of the National Treasury or the Ministry of Finance. Okay, uh, we'll, we are going to look into these policies in more depth. So let's start off with the fiscal policy. And uh, so the fiscal policy is what uh, our finance minister implements. So he is the one who is responsible. So when I'm doing this video, the current minister of finance is Tito Mboweni, okay? He used to be the governor of the Reserve Bank. So uh, he, he was responsible at one point for the monetary policy, and now he is responsible for the fiscal policy. And these two, yes, it makes sense for one person to be able to do both because, uh, yes, if you're an economist, yes, you, you understand both. 
all right so he is the guy who is responsible for this one uh you will see just now what the tools are like the main things that he's responsible for all right so this policy is about government's budget and uh, i'm doing this video in january and there are debates going on currently on whether the, he, he tito Mboweni should increase uh tax rates so that we can be able to afford the COVID vaccine and uh so there are a lot of debates going on and some economists argue that they should and some economists argue that they shouldn't okay um so you can have a look at uh what uh the media companies are saying in as far as that is concerned all right so how it raises and how it spends money so we have two main things here raising money uh government's main uh, source of revenue is taxation so government is going to tax uh the citizens and use this tax to decide on how to spend it and so this is our g all right as we all know t is a leakage and g is an injection so government takes money from all of us and the main reason is because they want to be able to provide us with public goods and services and now the problem is the characteristic of these public goods and services they are number one non-excludable number two they are also non rivalry so because of these characteristics there has to be something or someone who provides these public goods so that is where government comes into play government then comes in um, sort of intervenes and then they collect money from all of us and then they provide us with public goods and services since it is impossible to exclude free riders so we say they are non-excludable and since consumption by one does not diminish consumption by the other so there has to be something or someone that provides and so we have government and uh, our government uses the fiscal policy to do that all right so um the the the, the two main instruments of the fiscal policy is what we saw in the previous slide which is tax and spending so this is our t and this is our g so these changes can uh, affect the following macroeconomic variables uh, in the economy number one it affects aggregate demand so uh, you know we all know that the demand curve is downward sloping so what we mean by uh, this it, it tax and spending affects aggregate demand it can either shift it to the right so aggregate demand could be stimulated or aggregate demand could be sort of discouraged okay so the demand curve could shift to the left so it depends on what the minister of finance has done for instance an increase in tax means that there is less disposable income so obviously it's going to cause d2 and then an increase in oh an increase in tax will go along with a decrease in government spending and then the opposite will be a decrease in tax going along with it an increase in government spending let's have a look if there is less tax then they, that means we have more money in our pockets so disposable income goes up and we all know that when we have more money we have the natural tendency to go out and spend it and on the other hand government is injecting more money into the economy so this is going to cause a shift to d1 so this is not rocket science as you can see then the other thing that is uh the other variable that is affected by the you know the adjustment of tax and spending is the distribution of income so income could um you know uh, let's say uh it it because in south africa we use what we call a progressive income tax system which is charging high income earners more tax than low income earners so the 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 adjustment of these tax rates and so on uh they affect the distribution of income so there are groups that will sort of get more money and then there are groups that would uh them like sort of compromise their income in because of tax all right then the next one is the pattern of resource allocation within the government sector and relative to public sector
right then we also have the mini the the monetary policy which is like i said before the responsibility of the south african reserve bank all right so the monetary policy is the process by which the monetary authority which is the sarb of the country controls the supply of money often targeting the rate of interest um which is what we call the repo rate ne? the rate of interest for the purpose of promoting economic growth and stability again it takes us best to the back to this macroeconomic objective right uh, the sarb's monetary policy committee which is obviously led by the governor uh lesecha hanyaho who happens to be my friend you'll see he's gonna show up here uh not necessarily like yes but i know him on a personal level um is responsible for executing the monetary policy okay uh if you don't believe me there we go that is me right here with my big stomach and this is the governor of the reserve bank uh all right the next one is um the the monetary policy is the process by which the monetary authority of the country controls the supply of money often targeting a rate of interest for the purpose of promoting economic growth and stability oh this is just the repetition of the previous slide because i did this to yeah just show you that i know the such all right so monetary policy is referred to as either expansionary or restrictive and the same applies to even the fiscal policy i was supposed to mention this but anyway we're going to cover it in more depth when we do the new economic paradigm all right so it can either be expansionary or restrictive where the expansionary policy increases the total supply of money in the economy more rapidly than usually and the restrictive policy does the opposite okay I i'll explain it in more depth just now i'm going to make use of uh a blank page okay i don't know if i'll find it but yeah i'll see all right so the monetary policy instruments there we have them uh we have number one interest rates and uh so interest rates can either be adjusted upwards or they can be adjusted downwards depending on what is going on all right so the reserve bank is uh basically what uh, what happens is uh if commercial banks were to need were to be in need of money they'll borrow that money from the reserve bank and then the reserve bank is going to give them the money uh, but those commercial banks will have to pay back with an interest and th that interest is what we call the repo rate so let's say for instance uh i garden uh oh i'm now saying g okay yeah there are some people who call me garden imagine all right so myself garden i want a loan of one million rand so i could go to absa ne? so i go to absa i say i want a million and absa doesn't have the million so absa would go to the south african reserve bank to ask for a million rand so that they can give to Kaden. so the reserve bank is going to give absa the one million and then the absa is going to give me the one million but the condition is when the reserve bank gives absa the money They'll probably say we want it let me mention it with today's rate 3.5 percent now you can be surprised why is it so low it is low because um we are going through a lockdown here in south africa so can you imagine charging high repo rate during such times and uh there's covid 19 happening so there's no way interest rates could be around 14 percent where they are sometimes Yes, there was a time when it was around 15% somewhere there. And that was due to inflation. It was around 18%. That was way too high. So as one of the measures to curb inflation, uh, the Reserve Bank is going to use the repo rate. So yes, that means uh, from the 1 million that uh, the Reserve Bank is giving APSA, uh, the APSA must pay back with 3.5% on top and uh 3.5% of 1 million that will be 35000 rands okay so absa will have to pay the 1 million plus 35000 rand so this 35000 rand is the interest okay however oh i forgot the current repo rate all right uh, no no the current prime rate because this is the the current repo rate but i would estimate it at say 7% all right so if i put it at 7% that means okay absa gets the one million 
and then they pass it over to me. But the condition is when I pay it back, I must pay it back with 7% interest. In other words, I must pay back after the 1 million plus 70,000 rands. So then APSA takes the 1 million and the 70,000 rands, then they keep 35,000 rand as profit, and then they pass over 1 million 35,000 to, to, to SARB as paying back the loan. So it's not rocket science. I think you can see it's simple. All right, so another instrument will be cash reserve requirements. Yes, the South African Reserve Bank can uh, change balances or the banks as are required to maintain to manipulate the money uh, creation activities of banks. Of course, in your grade 12 syllabus, you don't need, you know, I, I took time on the repo rate because you really have to know how it's done. But in terms of cash reserve requirements, uh, just what it is, is enough for you. All right, then uh, we have open market transactions. The Reserve Bank directly reduces uh, or increases the supply of money in circulation by buying and selling government securities in the open market so they can do this. The next one is moral persuasion. The South African Reserve Bank can make use of this um, by, by consultation and persuasion to convince banks to act in a way that is desirable in the current economic climate. The next one will be, um, uh, what is this, exchange rate policy. Okay, this can either be free floating or controlled floating. Oh, I'm leaving out something here. It can also be, uh, okay, the controlled floating could be what we call managed. And then, oh yes, what's missing here is a fixed. Okay, so an exchange rate policy can either be free floating, which is what, uh, you know we use here in south africa of course there can be arguments about whether we really really use that or not because there are cases where the reserve bank uh, does what we say here controlled floating which is when the reserve bank interferes in foreign exchange market by buying and selling their own currency so you know when that happens it's it is controlled but yes, if they ask you in an exam which ex exchange rate system is used in South Africa, you would have to say we used a free floating exchange rate system. And uh, the one that is not here, uh, like I said, it is a fixed exchange rate system. So a fixed exchange rate system, this is when uh, a currency is fixed to a commodity, for instance. Uh, let's say a currency is fixed to uh, one ounce of gold. That means if gold goes up in price, that currency also appreciates. If gold goes down in price, then that currency will have to depreciate. Uh, another way would be fixing it to another currency. For instance, one rand is equivalent to one dollar. So what happens to the dollar happens to the rand. So that would be a fixed exchange rate system. Then uh, we have reserve deposits as one of the um, instruments. We have control, uh, credit control. We have management of public debt. All right, so it is the best. Uh, it is best for government to use its policies in combination with one another. By its policies, you know we are referring to the fiscal and the monetary policy. As usual, we end the lesson by giving you some homework. So I want you to def define the following terms. And like I said, I'm going to explain in more depth. So I'm going to do it in the next lesson as we revise expansionary, restrictive, expansionary, like that. Right, which two policies from question one can government use during a depression? You see, so it's a good thing that I didn't go in depth. So I would want you to use flex your, you know, thinking muscles and try to see if you were the finance minister, if you were the governor of the reserve bank, would you be, re when would you be restrictive and when would you be expansionary? Do you think during a depression, it is the right time to implement an expansionary fiscal policy or you think it's the right time to implement a restrictive one? Then which instruments, uh, which, which institution is responsible for executing executing the monetary policy. Uh, I think uh, if you go back in the lesson, you are going to see the answer to this one. And then the next one, name the two instruments of the fiscal policy. All right, I think we did that. All right, so uh, this happens to be the last part of the lesson. Thank you so much. As always, uh, please subscribe to the channel. 
I'll see you in the next lesson.